How to create a simple mandala using shapes in Affinity Designer. Hi, Kerry here from Dream Creator B and welcome to my channel. We'll show you how to make money online with low content products like KDP, low content books, printables and digital planners. So in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to create your own mandalas using shapes. Now, I do say Affinity Designer because that's software I'm using to show you, but you could actually use any software that allows you to use any shapes that you can uh, resize, rechange. So like Inkscape, Illustrator, um, Photoshop, Photopea, Gravit, all of those will allow you to do these sorts of shapes. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start a new document. Now I've done this as a square um, because it's just a lot easier to do it with squares. And I've also done it with a transparent background and um, it doesn't really matter the size because I'm using shapes in Infinity Designer, which is a vector program. So I can scale it as big as I want or as small as I want. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that you can create your own unique images. And also you can then take these images and mask them inside of like, say, pictures of animals or pictures of flowers and things like that. So again, you're just making your artwork and your coloring books a bit more unique. So let's get going. So the first thing you need to do is you need to click on file and then new. If you haven't already got it. So I'm doing it um, square. So eight inches by eight inches. I've set it at 400 DPI, but it doesn't matter what your DPI is. If you are just using these shapes because they remain vector images, you'd be what you'd be more concerned if you were adding other things and you weren't sure whether you were just adding J, JPEGs or PNGs, then you need to make sure that your DPI is as high as it can go. It said my orientation is landscape. It doesn't really matter when it's a square document because it's the same either way, if it's landscape or portrait. I'm not creating artboards because I'm only creating one image. If I wanted to create more than one image, then I would click create artboard and then it would allow me. I've done the color space of CMYK because that is if you are printing, it is the best sort of color space to use. And I've not done any margins or any bleed again, because this is not the final image that would go into a coloring book. You'd need to do a bit more to it. So I'm going to click create. So the first thing you can do is you can start creating images with shapes and in Affinity Designer, it's on your left hand side. Also with the iPad, if you're not using the um, left handed mode, it should also be on the left handed side. And it's usually just the rectangle tool on its own and then you tap it and a pop up appears with different shapes. So we're actually going to click on this little drop down here that says tier tool. Now on yours, it might be different. It might be um, another shape. So when you just drop down on that, it gives you the triangle tool, the diamond tool, the trapezoid tool, the polygon tool, the star tool, the double star tool, the square star tool, arrows, donut, pie, segment. That's a new one that's appeared. I'm really grateful for that one because I often use that. Crescent tool, cog tool, cloud tool, call out rounded rectangle, call out ellipse, tier tool and heart tool. So you can start creating all different ones that you want. So I'm actually going to start with the cloud tool and I am going to drag it out. And if I do shift, it actually does the right size for me. So it might be a bit too, might go to seven. And then I'm going to use the move tool, which is this black arrow here. And then I'm just going to drag it out and see if I can place it in the middle, my snapping's on. But what I can also use is this tool here, which is the alignment. And then I could just do center and center and then apply. And now I know that that is in the middle. Now I've got 12 bubbles. So what I can do is I can actually change the amount of bubbles. I can go as many as I want, as little as I want as well. You're best at using even numbers. So like uh, two, four, six, eight, sixteen, eighteen, those sorts of things. I might go down as little as 
8. My last image I used 16. I might go to 12. I'll go to 12. And then what you can do is you can then reduce your ra radius so that it goes bigger or smaller. And I also want to change my fill to white. So I could either clip it click at the top here or I can click on the color wheel and just take that over to white and then I also want to put a stroke on the strokes already black so I can just change that stroke out to as thick or as thin as I want it so I might do one point there just so you can see it I'm not going to convert any sh any anything to curves or anything because I'm quite happy with that and then I just need to keep creating different shapes and um making them fill in so i'm just gonna grab the pop tool here Oops. and then i'm gonna click on the move tool and again move this and if i'm not happy again i can just and that should be in the middle and then i can change how this looks as well I could keep going and making it a bit bigger so it actually fills in the space a lot better. And then what I could do is I can also change the notch sizes so they go a different size like that. Start looking different. I can change the inner radius as well so it comes down a bit. I can change the whole radius to none or to make it bigger like a sun. So different things. I can change the two size as well. So it starts filling out into different areas. And I can maneuver things around. Yeah, has my cloud got? 13, you see? 12. That's better. It fits in. <laughs> so... Let me just undo that and then go back to my cloud. 12. Go to the cog. I might want to move things around. Might even bring that in. So it's sort of going in and filling an area. So that's another shape that I can bring in and then I can click on the tool here. I can then bring the star tool and also before I go into the star tool, you can see that when you click on the shape tool, these red um, dots appear and they are basically doing that job up there. So you can change things, move that around. So again, we've got a different type of look. We can bring that look up a bit further. Well, let's sit with that. And now I've clicked on the star tool. I'm just going to drag that out. And again, I can change my points. Um, stick with 12. And then again, I can start making things look different like that into a flower sort of shape. So that's the outer and then the inner I can start dragging that in like that or I can drag it further out and I can change this as well so that it, it sort of gives me a, a new pattern and again I can start filling in into different parts. I could have used my resize, and again, I can go here. Don't move anywhere. And as you can see, I'm undoing a lot. Again, completely different look. I might actually make that twenty-four. fills it in a bit better so I'm quite pleased with that so again I'm just gonna make sure it's all centered 
And then I can also duplicate the star, which is Command J. And then again, I can try start changing different things with the, that one there. So that sort of goes inside. And I've got another new look. Um, then what I can do is I'm going to get the polygon tool out. Is that it's a big? Make it smaller, and then I'm going to put the both sides on. And I can also bring the curves in a bit. So again, you gain a totally different look. And like I say, you can click on the little red dots there to change them as well. And then I'm going to go in and get the, never use this one. Again. In the center there. And you can see that there's a red and green line that's lined up for that. So again, the donut tool, this is another one. It's a bit bigger. There we go. And then I want to use the See a tool. Put that there. And just swap it around by going up up there to change my flip flip my shape. Want that in the middle. And then I'm gonna click on Halt and drag down at the same time. You can see the line has appeared. Line it up, and then I'm going to flip that one there. I'm going to hold the shift key down, and then I'm going to group, which is Command G. Okay, so now I've grouped them, I'm going to copy. So Command C, Command V. I'm going to draw that one round. Then I'm going to go back to the original two, Command C, Command V. And then I'm going to draw that one round. And you might see that some movements get changed. So I'm going to go Command C, Command V. Command C, Command V. I didn't do the original. So I don't think that's going to make any difference. So what I can do with these ones that are slightly different, if I hold the shift down, hold command down, they both should move at the same time. Again, command down, they both should move at the same time. Command down, they both should move at the same time. I think I can get them. Okay, so I'm going to use a, a heart now. So I'm going to draw this one out. Grab the move tool so I can make sure I'm lining it up. Move it up a bit. Holding Alt down, I'm going to drag. Go once I see the line. And then I'm just going to Flip it and again highlight both of those two layers and then command G to group that and then command C and V and again I'm just gonna 
it didn't do it. Nancy, Manthy. Do that, and I might have to. Do you want a dead previously? Yeah, I'm gonna have to move them individually, but it doesn't matter. So what I can do So I actually think I'm gonna do these ones. Command there we go. Hold and command while I stretch. That's done, that one's done. This one here, command. I'm not doing command on that one because that one's so that is a quick and easy way of creating mandalas just using shapes and like I say, you can use this sort of method with any sort of graphic design program like Inkscape or any of those where they allow you to use shapes that you can actually change the different parts of the shapes, like how many points they've got, the inner radiuses or anything like that. This is just quick, simple and easier. There are more advanced strategies where you can make more intricate designs and that will be in my next video and that will also be using symbols. If you want to check out any other Infinity Designer videos that I've, if you want to check out any other Infinity videos I've made, go and check them out now.